Hey, virtual kiddos, there are three questions on the board. I'm going to have you pause this video. You can talk them out with someone who's working at home with you. You can write them down if you want to, but we're about to discuss as a class. They were, describe what John White found when he returned to Roanoke. What challenges did the Roanoke colony face? And what do you think happened to the settlers of Roanoke? And then I want you to support all of those with evidence, okay? Unpause this video when you're ready for us to check what you think. All right, question one. Describe what John White found when he returned to Roanoke. What did John White find when he returned? JC. So he found a bird card on the street, all the Okay, so JC says they found that word carved into the tree. What word was it? Croaton. Croaton. Very good. The houses were torn down. Anyone want to add? Think about those descendant stems we were using yesterday. Anyone like to add? Brennan. Um, no one was there. No one was there. No one was there. All right, very good. Look at question number two. What challenges did the Roanoke colony face? What challenges did they face? Okay, look. Bad food. Molly? Um, jungle yes, they were being attacked by Native American tribes. And to be fair, it's because the Native American tribes, what had happened to them? They got attacked. They had been attacked first, okay? So we were they were attacking back and forth. Okay, Trenton? Um, there was no food or water. Yeah, they, they said food was scarce. What's it mean when something is scarce? Wow. There's hardly, there's hardly any of it. There's hardly any of it. They were starving. They arrived too late in the winter to plant crops. And so food was scarce. Very good. All right. What do we think happened to the, to the colony? What do we think happened to this colony? Morgan. I think what happened to them was they, when John White went back to England to get our supplies, they went too so they could get more supplies. And when they were gone, um, other ships from other places, they came and attacked them. Okay. And the boat sunk and we could never find them. So we think maybe maybe they got on their own ship to try and go to back to England too because things were so bad and they were lost at sea. Okay. Um, there's a place that said um, John White didn't see nothing, nobody. Um, I think they um, thought that John White would be coming back so they could um, invoke and put up in they split up and left, maybe to go find better ground to live on. Okay, Brennan? I think, um, they, uh, they, hey, JC, baby, make sure that we're being respectful so that when Brennan's talking, we're listening. It's okay. Thank you. I forgot because Tristan was there. All right, let's look at our goal. Ready? One more time. I will be able to. I will be able to. Analyze a fourth grade level passage. Analyze a fourth grade level passage. Four main idea. Four main idea. And. And. Justify. Justify. With. With. Supporting details. Supporting details. Good job. All right, kiddos. You're going to have this discussion. Virtual kiddos, these are the questions that we're going to go over. What is main idea? What are the steps for finding it? What text features can help me? And why is learning about main idea important? Unpause this video when you're ready. All right, guys. What is main idea? Do we think what the passage is? Oh, yeah. Very good. What are the steps for finding it? Step number one is? Reading. Passage and the? Title. What did we talk about yesterday? Not just the title, the what? Written? Headings. 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 The headings. Okay. Step number two, class. Reread the? First, second, and last. When we're doing a passage, what are we going to really reread? The beginning and the? End. Okay? Step number three, class, ask? Who or what? Who or what? The? Okay. That is one thing I'm seeing us get hung up on. We're looking at the first, second, and last sentence, and we're just picking one of those and calling it good. And sometimes we get lucky and we're right. Sometimes we're not right at all. Look at Miss Trista hijacking my TV. I know. She does it on accident. I do the same thing to her, though. It's okay. Um. So we're really good at picking a first, second, last sentence. What we struggle with is really asking ourselves the who or what. 
Guys, as we get deeper into passages, today we're going to read an even bigger passage than what we read yesterday. As we dig deeper into passages, first, second, last sentence isn't always going to be there to help us. It will be sometimes. It's still a strategy we need to use, Corbin and Hunter. But it is not going to always be the answer. Okay? You've got to make sure you're asking yourself that question, who or what. If we're not asking ourselves that question, we're missing out on one of the biggest pieces. Okay, so what question are we always asking ourselves? Who or, who or what? Okay, and you've got to ask yourself, what was the whole thing about? And if you think you've picked out a main idea, double check yourself and go, okay, is this main idea really what the entire passage was about? Okay? All right, uh, we've kind of already answered text features, titles, and headings. Why is learning about main idea important? Why is learning about main idea important, Morgan? Because when you get in high school, that you um you might not know it and so if you don't know it then you could be fail in it and you might be in a world where then you need to be yeah to be good at it. so morgan saying it's an important skill as i get older especially as i start getting into high school who would agree with what morgan said why else is learning about main idea important why is this something we're spending so much time on this is gonna be our third week of main idea brennan if we don't know what we're reading about, then there's really no point of doing it because we have no idea what we're reading. Exactly. Brennan said, if I don't know what I'm reading about, if I don't understand the main idea, there's almost no point in anything else because I don't understand what I'm reading. And if I don't understand what I'm reading, am I going to be successful? No. 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 All right. We're done with discussion. You can go back to assigned seats um, if you had to move because your partner was absent. All right, kiddos. So what we're going to do today is look at me what we're going to do today is we're going to dig into a brand new article actually called the mystery of roanoke um it goes along with the video that we watched yesterday in class what we're going to do really quickly is we're going oh my eyes here what we're going to do really quickly is we're going to go ahead and get logged in to Scholastics as we're going to read this on our computers. Okay? So, virtual kiddos, you're going to want to have your passage open and this video playing at the same time. The title of your passage is called The Mystery of Roanoke. It is on Google Classroom for you under the Wednesday tab. You're going to open it, um, and there's a little button over to the side that says Presentation View. That's how I would like for you to open it. Okay, go do that. Come back when you're ready. All right, virtual kiddos, this is what your article should look like. You should have it open in that presentation um, view. If you're struggling with that, send me a message and I'll help you. I want you to make sure you have this article open and my video next to you because we're going to be working on both throughout our lesson today. All right, kiddos, I'm going to model for you. So our when we model, our eyes are... Thank you, Alex. Our eyes are... Our hands are... Empty. Oh, my. Let's try it again. Our eyes are... JC. Okay, we know this. Let's listen to what I'm saying. When I model, I, I, our eyes are forward. Thank you. Our hands are empty. And our brains are. All right, let's make those happen so you shouldn't have anything in your hands. No talking chips. You're not messing on the computer. All right, here we go. So when I am reading for main idea, we know that this week we are reading for sections of the text and not just paragraphs. So I'm going to model finding main idea of this entire first section for you. Okay? You may follow along with me on the computer as I read. Here we go. Step one when I'm looking for main idea is to read it. I need to read the passage and I need to read the title. Okay? Here, I've got that really cool, spooky looking title. It says The Mystery of Roanoke. There's nothing really else there for me to look at, okay? So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna read through my section. 10-year-old Robert Ellis could hardly believe it. It was July 1587, and finally, Robert and his father were here, America. Back home in England, most people had only heard stories about this dazzling, unfamiliar land. The journey by ship across the ocean from England had taken two miserable months. Rats nipped at people's toes. Human waste sloshed around the bottom of the boat. If you dunked into the ocean for a bath, 
you might get bitten by a shark. This had actually happened to someone. But when Robert stepped on shore that warm day in 1587, memories of the nightmarish trip melted away. Stretched out before him was a place of unimaginable beauty. Golden beaches sloped into glittering water. Thick forests hummed with the sound of frogs. This was Roanoke, a tiny island off the coast of what the English called Virginia. Today, this is part of North Carolina. Robert, his dad, and about 115 other people had come here for an important mission to start a colony, a little piece of England in America. They would build a cozy village, set up farms, and gather treasures to send back home. Furs, fruits, spices, maybe even gold. But if Robert had known what would soon happen on Roanoke, he might have jumped right back onto the ship and sailed home to England. Within three years, he and the other colonists would vanish from the face of the earth. Okay, so my job when I'm looking for main idea is I need to go back and look at the beginning and go back and look at the end. In the beginning, it says 10-year-old Robert Ellis could hardly believe it. It was July 1597, and finally Robert and his father were here, America. Back home in England, most people had only heard stories about this dazzling, unfamiliar journey. At the end, it said, but Robert, if Robert had known what would soon happen on Roanoke, he might have jumped right back on the ship and sailed home to England. Within three years, he and the other colonists would vanish from the face of the earth. And then my most important part, asking myself who or what. I've got to make sure I ask myself who or what. Okay, well, I know my who. My who is Robert. My story today is about Robert. We know he's with his father. We know he's with some other colonists. Let's see if we can get this erased. Okay, but what I need to still ask myself what I need to still ask myself is what? Well, what about Robert? Guys, listen to me. The only part of this passage that even talked about them disappearing from Roanoke was the very, 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 very end. Throughout the rest of the passage, it was focusing on Robert and his journey. Okay? Only the end of this talked about how the colonists disappeared. And I know that's what we constantly want to say. But I have to ask myself, what was this all about? And if I'm looking through my passage, this was about, I know my who, Robert, and his journey to America. Okay? This, this section of the passage is about Robert and his journey to America. But I'm not done. I have to prove it. That's that second part of our goal is to justify it with a supporting detail. So I remember when I quote supporting details, I do it word for word. So here we go. Let's find one. I'm going to pick this sentence right in the middle. It said, but when Robert stepped on shore, That warm day in 1587, <laughs> memories of the nightmarish trip melted away. And I'm going to dot, 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 because that's what I would finish writing. Okay? All right. Questions about how I did that. Turn and tell your partner how Miss Megan found main idea of this section. Turn and tell your partner how Miss Megan found main idea of this section. All right, guys, how did I find main idea? Raising a hand, how did I find main idea? Lakin. Yeah, I went back and I reread the beginning and the end after I read it. What else did I do to help me find main idea? Brennan. You read the whole thing and talked about it. I read the whole thing and you heard me doing what after I read it? I was really thinking about it, right? What really important question did I ask myself? Noah. The who or what? 
The who or what. And even when I had put it up there, I made sure what this whole thing about Robert and his journey. Okay? All right. So now it's going to be our turn. Okay? Um, virtual kiddos at home, you're just going to follow along on paper with me today. Okay? So this is what we're going to do. Move your article to the second page. All right. We are going to do a think right round robin, okay? So let me read it to you first, and then I'm going to give you some instructions. Here we go. We're looking under the section beside the deer that says many wonders. Follow along with me as I read. Follow along with me as I read. Many wonders. For a kid like Robert, living in 1587, traveling to America, was almost as thrilling and terrified as the idea of flying to the moon. Just 100 years earlier, people in Europe hadn't known North and South America even existed. It wasn't until the early 1500s that they found out amazing lands lay across the Atlantic Ocean. Few could have imagined the wonders of the new world, as they called it. Tree after tree stretched as far as the eye could see. Giant mountains seemed to touch the clouds. Wildflowers bloomed in bright colors. And the animals, buffalo and beavers and grizzly bears and salmon and so many flying geese that they blocked out the sun. European countries like Spain, Portugal, France, and England were eager to seize the riches of the new world. Kings and queens sent explorers across the ocean. Christopher Columbus, John Cabot, Ferdinand Magellan. Tales of their journeys spread across Europe. Virtual kiddos, I want you to go find main idea of that section with one supporting detail. Press play when you're ready to review.